It's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel. Now, today we're going to go check out the new music video by our friends Kane. Uh, this is a video called A Slave to the Grind, uh, which dropped the other day. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, nothing really more to say. It's a, it's a live performance capture video they did just before um, uh, Rage went and had his shoulder operation, I believe. Uh, so he did it a few days before that. Um, and now, unfortunately, Liam, the drummer's broken his arm. So that, why am I laughing? That's not very nice to say. Liam's unfortunately broken his arm, so uh, he's out of action for the next few months. But uh, hopefully they'll be back out on the road very soon. But let's go check out their new music video. <laughs> Let's go! 
Okay, there we go. Cane and sleeve to the grind. Don't know why I have to say it that way, but why not? Uh, Andy, over to you, mate. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, big fan of this band. I, I love their sort of work ethic. Um, Rage Sadler, the guitarist and vocalist, he puts so much of his life into this band and, you know, all credit to him. This is, this is one of my favourite songs of theirs, if I'm honest, you know. It's, it sort of stands out as being much, you know, sort of higher tempo, faster tempo than, than you, know, you know, most of uh, Kane's tracks. Um, and I think he's he's had sort of to defend himself a little bit there because there's some sort of stalwart fans who think this is a speed metal bollocks. I think he's, you know, he's, he's quite to say something like that. You know, he's had to sort of justify tracks like this, but I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, catchy opening riff straight into the song um and then very very memorable and sing-along chorus you know that's the standout for this track mm -hmm. you know you can off uh, yes i know it but it, you know hearing it the first time i'm sure it's sort of stuck in your mind um i really like that sort of calm gentle midsection very adrian smith dave murray maiden interplay with the guitars and then when you when the riff comes back in you think that's the sort of the song is progressing to to its finale but we get the, get a really really good solo which if, if you know me you know i'm not a massive fan of solos but this, this really showcases toby's guitar skills and, and why not if you're a songwriter and an excellent guitarist why not introduce it to to a song and really sort of show what you can do um and then the chorus there's a variation in in the low vocal delivery the, the, yeah. the pauses yeah. are taken out is it's it's spat at you really really fast and it's just a really good track. I like the the punches on the riff. You know, the sort of whether it's just a single guitar and the drums are sort of is it in the cymbal and the guitars are just calling them punches, don't you, Kurt? You know, din, 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 din. Mm. But yeah, love Kane, love that track. Really, really good. Oh, the video itself as well. <laughs> good to talk about that. Yeah, let's yeah, yeah, talk about the video. Talk about the video. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's really well put together. I don't know if Kane, uh, Rage is involved in that as well, but there's obviously. A big chunk of it is pre, you know, sort of recorded for the purpose of the video, um, made to look as like a live performance, and it's intercut with with various live shots as well. I, I noticed the they must be taken from the most recent tour that they did with um, Right Act. Me and you went to Cambridge, Dave. I don't think yeah. that was there to be honest, the Portland Arms, but the the, you know, the backdrop from that that sort of tour was was on show. But yeah, great song, great video, loved it. Okay, so my thoughts on this. Um, there's a good three-minute song in there. And that's that's how I'm going to sit here on this one. So I understand I, the bits I really like about this track is there is no there's no fluff at the beginning. It's literally start and then you just go straight into the first verse. There's no 30, 40 seconds of intro and then the vocals come in. So it does catch you off guard because you kind of expect from that first riff that you're going to have a bit of a build-up. And literally within four bars, he's just like spitting barbs at you and he's like okay fucking hell we're into the song already um love the delivery of the track on this uh but it's when we get to that clean midsection it's like they've gone oh metallica master of puppets we can do something similar to that but they don't do that they don't build that midsection out they play it and they do a couple of little lead melodies which don't really go anywhere and then they just cut straight back to the song again so I actually think that midsection is superfluous. It doesn't need to be there. If anything, it took all the energy out of the track for me. I think if you'd gone from that end of that bit before the clean section and just gone into the solo. And do you know what? I think when we reviewed the album, I said something very similar to this. I'm sure when we talked about it, when we did a Kane album review, I said it probably the same thing, that it could have gone straight into the solo to the end and been around about three minute mark. And actually that would have been a real punchy track so I understood what they were trying to do. They were doing that kind of thrash metal midsection ballady bit. For me, it loses the energy of the track and it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't build like with Master of Puppets. It then builds back up again and you have that clean into a build up before it goes to the, the final thrashy bit at the end. So this doesn't really do that. 
Um, now, as far as the video, I think it gives you a really good indication. If you've never seen the band live, you're getting a really good vibe from that. You're really getting from what they've done with the green lighting, cutting it in with the live shots as well. Um, I don't even know if they needed to do cut the live shots together because the live shots were from different takes, from different songs by the look of it. So to have a live performance video with the green lights and performance going on, to then cut to live footage, which isn't in sync or from the same songs, I'm not sure if it's needed. Maybe crowd shots or some of the other angles might have been a bit better because I was trying to go, is this from the same song that they're performing from the live? But I understood what they're trying to do. They're trying to give you that that live feel. Um, so I think from if you don't overanalyze it uh, like I would, but if you didn't overanalyze it, you'll enjoy that element. Um I mean, Liam on drums, the guy's a fucking metronome. That's insane, that guy. That was double kick, like, literally for, like, four minutes of just double kicking. <laughs> just solid, uh, which I thought was great. Um, I am going to pick one bit on the video, though. Uh, the clean section. When well, you've got that close-up of Kane Rage playing that clean guitar, why have you still got a fast strobe going? You don't have a fast strobe. That's, that's left over from the rest of the shot. They've got rid of the green lights and they've just left it go. He's going, bah, 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 and he's like, bum, 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 bum. I'm like, wow, your strobe is well off. That's a soft focus light that's meant to be going on there in a video. You switch the light in to match the mood of the music. That wasn't done. And then when you've got Toby, who's playing the, the other lead melody, he's behind Kane with no light on him. You can't see him. He's in the black in the back. I was like, you haven't thought so this. Now, Kane Rage did say when he was. They put this together very quickly. So what we talked about when we did when we talked about the telescribe video, I talked about all my shots and all my angles were thought about well in advance. This to me was they had an idea, they filmed it, and they just shot it. And then afterwards, I reckon if you asked them after the fact, they would have been like, actually, if we'd done some different lighting to change that vi vibe on that section, we would have. But we just had to do take after take, quick shots. Uh, and that's what it felt like there, that that was just a lost opportunity to really change the mood of the lighting. They just took the green light out, left the little <laughs> strobe go in, and you lost all of the other guys in the background. Just got You just got rage at the front, which uh, for me would be something I'd have readdressed, but I think time didn't allow for it. But that did jar me a, a lot, that flashing strobe during a, a clean guitar picking. I'm like, okay, this is feeling like my head's going to hurt now from this. this. That doesn't work for me. But I, you guys probably didn't pick up. I don't know. Kirk, what did you reckon? I agree about the clean section. It's too abrupt, isn't it? it it's not needed. Or they could have worked it in better. And, uh, and as you pointed out with Metallica's Master of Puppets, it then builds, doesn't it? Builds tension. Builds you back, back it, into it, yeah. And they just go straight back into the song. It's like if you see all the tracks on Keybase, you've got the mouse cut cut and just put, put it in there drop. it's like yeah. there's no need to do that you know think think how you're going to work that in it's just too abrupt nothing wrong with the playing I, I like the song because it reminds me of the early megadeth energy even the guitar tone and the uh fast alt picking mm, yeah better vocalist clearly rage than dave mustaine isn't he? he's, he's almost tommy victor of prong has a similar style and a bit of new york comes through and um, obviously we know rage and he's you can actually, his accent does come through at times without being offensive because no one wants to hear someone with a strong Essex accent in a metal song, but it's himself. You can hear his personality in there. They don't. Come on. Who wants to hear a Essex accent? <laughs> That's it. You just you know, alienated the whole of Essex. All right. Song. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, well, the, who wants to hear a Lancashire accent? You know, mine. Yeah, you know, that's accent. going on the fun now. No one wants to hear someone with an Essex accent. <laughs> <laughs> metal. Uh, but yeah, no, the, good chorus as well. It's just high energy thrash metal isn't it and i could just listen to that all day i remember my dad once went on holiday i think to antigua and they were just playing reggae all day and he, he said look can you play something else if i went on holiday and they were just playing thrash like this all the time that would do me i could just listen to this all day i don't even need to pay attention to it because it just it's so agreeable with what i like about heavy guitar music that i'm just never gonna have to turn it off you know it, it's just something that I'm so used to listening to, and I never grow tired of. So, thrash metal, great genre. But Andy, did you say that the, this this sparked a bit of controversy? Are, are they more of a heavy metal type band than a thrash band? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Kane are, are proud to be British heavy metal. 
you know, Rage, Rage sort of, uh, as I say, as to champion his band and say, there is an audience for this kind of thing. You know, we're not Iron Maiden clones. There, you know, people do like this. There are sort of other bands I can think of. A Simeon Guillotine are, are, are in a similar vein as well. Yeah, they're kind of battling against what is what is popular, which is not traditional heavy British metal. And this is kind of a little bit of a departure from what they usually deliver, isn't it, Dave? Um, yeah, it's a bit more, a bit more on the nose. I'd prefer yeah. that. I mean, I thought they were a thrash band because the, the songs I've heard. Seem to it, be like, yeah, the earlier cool stuff is right. very new wave of British heavy metal. Exactly. The early stuff, the Waystone album, for instance, is very much like the the most recent album has definitely. I mean, Crisis of uh, was it Crisis of Faith was definitely a bit more thrashy. Uh, but eight, was it uh, After Extinction? This is where this is from. Yeah, yeah. So After Extinction was definitely more of an aggressive attack. I think he put into it. Because he was, I think Rage was like, no, I'm going more on it rather than being like Reforge the Steel was again more new wave of British heavy metal. So he's definitely done done that, and he he kind of almost wanted to attack the people that are going, oh, you sound like new wave of British heavy metal. And they were like, fuck you, yeah, exactly. We're not just going to keep being doing the same new wave. We can do other things. And so he went out, and now the people that like the new wave of British heavy metal go, oh, what are you doing, man? Don't change. Yeah. You can't do that. And he's Look like, at the band fuck t-shirt. off, everyone. <laughs> the drummer's wearing a boarded t-shirt. The bass player's wearing a Mayhem t-shirt. Rage is wearing Metallica. So that's another thing, isn't it? With 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 thrash, it's you just want to see what t-shirts are they wearing. <laughs> Here's another <laughs> question: How are they to display that? Did you, any of you think it look feel like really odd watching Toby on guitar playing thrash on an SG guitar? Yeah, that is not a guitar I ever asso- associate. I also say that with bands. Tony Iommi. Yeah, it's like that's doom or bluesy groove rock. It's like him sitting there. Fret. I'm like, I'm sure he's got a really nice like ESP in there, and he's got a few nice guitars. I was like, why, why the SG? Odd. Hey, anyway, right. <laughs> by him as well. <laughs> if you enjoyed our video today, please do like, share, subscribe, click the bell icon. We'll see you on the video sometime very soon. Take care. <laughs>